I don't know if you watch all my videos, but if you do, in the last video, what I did was to model the motion of an object around the Earth using the momentum principle. And then I made a graph of the velocity as a function of distance to, to show how escape velocity works. And then I used work energy, um, and this is my definition of kinetic energy, assuming the Earth doesn't move, and this is the potential energy of the Earth ball system, whatever you want to be called, and I get this escape velocity. So I did all that. And, and I've also done a video deriving this. But now what I want to do is to use that program and change it. I want to make a plot of kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total energy. Okay, so if I have a system of the ball plus the earth, there's no work done on that system because there's no external forces. And so it's just a change in kinetic energy of the ball plus change in kinetic energy of the earth, which I assume doesn't change, plus a change in gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to start it from the surface of the Earth, um, and then let's just throw it and see what happens. So I'm going to go, I just have that exact same program. I'm going to modify it and make a graph. Three things, right? Three things. Potential energy, kinetic energy, total energy. And then we're going to play with it. And we're going to do something cool. Okay. Switching to Python. Hello, Python. So this is the output. Uh, this is where we left off with the other thing. And so this was two different... Um, I, I launched two different balls and um, just to see that, you know, they had the same speed and they had the same velocity versus position graph up to a certain point. But let's just change it. Let's just go up here, change, edit. And I, this is a new program. I'm not going to change the old one because, you know, that's the way that goes. So first, let's just change plot um, the position R on the x-axis. I still want to do that. But let's pl uh, plot energy on the y-axis. And I'm just going to, I could make some cool units, but let's just do joules. Um, but other than that, keep the width the same and so forth. This curve, I'm going to take off the dot. And I'm going to make this the potential energy. So let's call this Fu. Uh, and then I need kinetic energy, Fk. I'm going to leave the dot on this one. And then I need one more graph. I'm going to call it Fe for the total energy. And that's equal to G curve color equals color dot purple. I just picked the, the ones that show up the best. And let's turn on the dot true here again. Um, so remember dot equals true, what that does is it, uh, when it's plotting the graph, it puts a dot at the point it's plotting. This is all the same, oh, let's change, let's make this, let's make this, that's, that's fine. Um, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, but down here, I am going to get rid. I don't want to do it twice. I'm just going to do it once. I could do it twice. Nah. Let's just do it once. Okay, so now I need to do a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is to, I want to plot the potential energy before I even graph anything. So I want to make that potential energy curve before I model stuff. So let's just do that. So I'm going to do that with a temporary variable. I'm going to start with a temporary R, RT. It's a scalar value. I don't need I don't need a vector. And it will start at the radius of the Earth. And then I need DRT, let's say it's a thousand. So how, how big of a step am I going to move? And now I'm going to say while uh, RT is less than three times RE. So I'm going to go from the radius of the Earth to three times the radius of the Earth. And I'm going to plot the, the potential. That's what I'm going to do. I don't need a rake, so I can do this as fast as I can. I want to just do this first. So the first thing is to calculate potential. U is negative G times mass of the Earth times mass divided by RT. RT is the variable I'm changing. Now let's plot that. FU dot plot. Uh, RT, U. And then I need to increase my value of RT. RT equals RT plus DRT. Okay, so that should make that curve. Let's run this. Uh, I do need to get rid of this line right here because there is no F1 anymore. So we'll, it'll just make the, the potential energy plot. Let's just make sure that's working. And we know what it should look like. But let's see. Okay, there's that. Okay, so that looks good. So that's my potential energy plot. You can't start at R equals zero because the potential is negative infinity, so you have to pick some point. And we know that as you get further and further away, it gets closer to zero, but it's negative. So this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so now we can plot the other two energies. So down here, that's fine. Uh, I need to calculate the potential at that point, right? Because I'm moving, my mass is moving along. I need to calculate the potential at that point. And I need to calculate the kinetic. So let's do that right here. K, 
I have momentum. So let's use p squared over 2m. That is the same as kinetic energy. So p squared is m squared v squared divided by 2m is 1 half mv squared. So let's, uh, it's going to be mass, oh, mag, mag mass dot p, that's the momentum, squared divided by 2 times m. That's the kinetic energy. And then the potential, u is negative g times me times m divided by mag mass dot pos. Mass dot pos is r, right? Now I can plot both of those. This is called, oh, I just, just delete the whole thing. So f u dot, no, I don't need to plot f u. f k dot plot uh, the position, which is mag mass dot pos, uh, and then the kinetic energy. And then I'm going to plot the total energy, f e dot plot mag mass dot pos, and then I'm going to plot k plus u. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Perfect. Now, we can talk about this graph because it's super important, right? This is the total energy. Look at the total energy right here. The kinetic energy is decreasing. The gravitational potential energy is increasing. But the total energy is constant because the work done is zero. So that the change in energy is zero. So this has to be a constant line. And the important thing is right here, at this point, what happens? At that point, notice that the kinetic energy is zero. Because if you were over here with that same total energy, let's make it more exaggerated, way over here, then notice this distance. That would be my, the difference between this and the total energy would be my kinetic energy. But that would give a negative value for kinetic energy. It has to be less than that. And if kinetic energy is negative, how do you have velocity squared? It has to be positive. So kinetic energy has to be positive. So this point where the total energy is equal to the potential energy is the maximum distance that this thing can get from the starting location. Now, what's going to happen if I started off with a higher speed? So let's do that. So remember, this is at negative 4 times 10 to the ninth. Let's go back and just change that. Uh, let's make this 8,500. So it was down here, now it's up here. And so since it's at a higher total energy, oh, it's gonna come all the way back down. Since it's at a higher total energy, it's gonna be able to get further away to the point where the potential energy is zero. So you get further away because you have a higher potential. Now, how, how would you get an infinite distance away? Well, if I, if I increase my energy to here, you can see I'm going to get past 3R. I could, I could even you know, increase a little bit and I'd get all the way over here. But what if I increase my total energy to zero? If my total energy is zero, then this will go an infinite distance away because this doesn't get to zero. As R goes to infinity, U goes to zero, so you would get an infinite distance away. And that's escape velocity. Escape velocity is right here where it, the total energy is equal to zero. You can give it more than that energy. You could be up here, and then what will happen is it will get an infinite distance away, um, and it will still have speed. It will still be moving. What if I launch at an angle? Let's try that. Let's see what happens. So if I go up here, and let's change this to the, the value that we had before. So now I'm launching it at... At an, ang at an x, y angle, but it still has the same velocity because I took the norm of that. So you can see what's happening there and what happens here. Notice that the kinetic energy never got to zero. It came over here but did not get to zero. It, but, and that's fine, right? It doesn't mean it's going to go as far as it can possibly go, but the total energy is still constant. It just doesn't, it doesn't have to go all the way to the farthest point. Um, we could even make that more exaggerated. Let's say put this at 2. It's, it's a higher, a steeper angle. And look, it's, gonna, it's not going to go past. It's not going to go any further away. It's going to go less far, far, less further, less shorter. But you'll notice here, it doesn't get as far. And so right there, it still has kinetic energy. It never stopped. Now, what if, what if it was moving in a circular orbit? 
what would this graph do? What would this graph look like? Well, let's, let's first start off like this. I want to move my, my mass. I don't want to be right on the surface of the Earth. And I, I don't have to. So let's change this to uh, the starting position is 1.5 times. Now, it's going to have a lower escape velocity because it's already halfway there. Uh, and that's fine. So let's just decrease this velocity by 750. So I start way up here, which is fine. That just means I, I start over here, right? I'm going to decrease. I still am not going to escape. Actually, I'm going to get pretty far away. It's not going to escape because I know it's not going to escape because the total energy is less than zero. Let's slow that down a little bit. Let's change that to four. I'm just picking some values here. Okay, that's what I want. So you see it didn't go further away. Um, and it, it didn't go, what happened? Oh, it didn't, that's, that's the radius of the Earth. It went below the radius of the Earth. That's fine. Okay, let's put that in a circular orbit. Let me jump over to the paper and remind you how to calculate a circular orbit. We're going to change the velocity so it's in a circular orbit. So let's say I want to, calc I want to have it moving in the, y in, the, in the y direction, and I want to calculate the magnitude of that. So here's my circular orbit. I have the gravitational force Fg, and that's going to be equal to the centripetal acceleration. So I have F net r in the r direction, it's going to be negative g, mass of the Earth, mass over r squared, and that's going to equal mass velocity squared over r. That's centripetal acceleration times the mass. That cancels. I want to solve for the velocity, so I get v equals, this mass cancels, v equals the square root of, that's negative, g, mass of the Earth, over r. So let's calculate that velocity, give it to my object, see what it does, and then look at the energy plot. Okay, so let's calculate that. I'm going to say v0 equals, oops, I did move it. Okay, let's just put this as uh, square root g times mass of the earth divided by 1.5 times the radius of the earth. Square root, yep, that's it. Okay, that's all I have to do. Oh, I do need this. I need this in the y direction. So zero, one, zero, one, zero. So now it's, it's launched in the y direction. Oh, I didn't even switch, I'm sorry. Right there, ha, apologize, I was just excited. So this is the only line I added here. I added this line right there, v zero, the square root of g me divided by 1.5 re. And then I have to have the, the momentum in the y direction. So it's in a, since it starts on the x axis, I wanna make it move in a circle. Let's see if this does indeed move in a circle. Okay, it looks like it. And if we scroll down here to the graph, so if it's moving in a circle, then its distance from the center of the Earth does not change. So it's not moving left or right. It still has a total energy, and it still has um, some kin kinetic energy, but those don't change. The kinetic energy doesn't change. Okay. Now, let's just have it move at a slightly slower uh, velocity, so it's not completely circular, and you can see what happens. I'm just going to multiply this by uh, 0.88 times, I don't know why I did 0.88, that's just a value. And then it's not completely circular, and you see these. this does indeed move, it's going to be moving back and forth a little bit, um, or a lot. It should come back, it'll come back, it, I didn't plot it below that. Oh no, I stopped it, I stopped the, the thing from running. Okay, see it stopped. Let's run, uh, let's make it a little bit faster then. 1.1 times that. Now it won't crash into the earth. So now it's going to go up there and it's going to just oscillate back and forth between those parameters like that. It's going to get back to the same position with the same velocity once it makes an orbit, which is going to take a while, apparently, because it's going kind of slow. But it will just oscillate back and forth. It will come back down to here and it will go back down to there. So that's a non-circular orbit, but it's still an orbit. Now, if you really wanted to, you could, you could treat this as a two-body problem and find the minimum effective potential, and that's where that circular motion is going to be, but that's a little bit more advanced. Um, so there, it, it's going to go oscillate back and forth. That's it. Is that cool? I like it.